Would you stop participating in the sport that you love just because there are risks associated with it? Being a cheerleader for over se seven years now, I've, ton I've seen tons of injuries that are not always pleasant to the eye. I've only broken a finger and had a few sprains, so I can consider myself one of the lucky ones. But not every cheerleader gets off that easy. Today I'm here to tell you guys about the seriousness and dangers of cheerleading. Two, four, six, eight. Who do you appreciate? To most people, this sounds like a silly cheer. But cheers like this one is only a fraction of what is involved in the sport of cheerleading, especially when cheerleaders fight with gravity every day. A sport is defined as an athletic activity requiring skill or physical prowess and often of a competitive nature. According to the NCAA, the physical fitness of a cheerleader is the same as that of anyone on any other college sports team. However, your basic sideline cheerleaders are not included into this category. According to expert Heather Dow, cheerleading is becoming more popular and essential for crowd involvement at games. And because of that, the skills that are being shown are getting more advanced and therefore more dangerous. Cheerleading is often looked at as not an athletic, but what many people fail to realize is that cheerleading is one of the most dangerous sports outside of the Olympic sports due to the increase of technique difficulty. With every basket toss being thrown higher and every pyramid another girl taller, these things make it easier for someone to suffer from an injury. A basket toss is when three to four girls or boys throw the top girl, which is a flyer, into the air so she can pull cool tricks. Kick fulls, back tuck baskets, and X out baskets tosses are what gets the crowd going. But what happens when that basket toss gets thrown off? What happens when a girl doesn't land all the way during her flip? High school cheerleader Laura Jackson became paralyzed from the neck down after throwing her round off back handspring back tuck. She is now known as a quadrupelic and a former cheerleader. According to the American Cheer Association, cheerleading injuries accounted for 4,954 hospital visits in 1980. But in the year 2001 alone, emergency departments saw 22,603 cheerleading injuries, according to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. This all sounds crazy, right? Who knew that the girls who are supposed to be ditzy and known for shaking their pom-poms and bodies at football games could actually be participating in one of the most dangerous sports? Although these include springs and broken, broken bones, injuries like the one Laura Jackson suffered from are becoming incredibly popular. Nobody wants to be told not to do the thing that they love just because they are dangerous to it. Cheerleaders are not the only ones who risk their lives every day for their passion. The difference being most people do not take cheerleaders seriously. By sticking to what they know, cheerleaders should continue to take necessary safety precautions so we can see our statistics on injuries drop. Some examples of safety, safety precautions are as follows. Spotters should always be used when attempting new things. All cheerleading squads should adapt, adopt a comprehensive conditioning and strength building program. All cheerleaders should receive proper training before attempting any form of cheerleading gymnastics, which includes tumbling or flipping, partner stunts or co-ed stunting, pyramids, and jumps. Being knowledgeable about what to do when someone gets injured is also very important. Even if a cheerleader says that she is okay, it is important for them to get checked out. And if they say they are not okay, don't tell them to brush it off, because the body can only endure so much. According to chiropractor Angela Bangalow, a total of 1,115 cheer-related injuries occurred over the last three years, with 43.5% of them keeping a cheerleader out of participation for more than a week. 28.3% of them resulted in a visit to an emergency department, and 56% of these injuries occurred during a stunt or pyramid due to fall from a height in contact with another team member. According to Ann Durning with ABC News, high school cheerleader Patty was paralyzed after sustaining a brain injury last October in LA while cheering for Marshall High's football team. Her dad reported that she was hit in the chest during a catch and her heart stopped. There reportedly was not a working defibrillator at the stadium. Her family says it took 30 minutes for an ambulance to arrive and by then Patty had suffered serious brain damage because of the lack of oxygen. Don't get me wrong, cheerleading is so much fun when you know how to safely execute what you know, even with there being a, serious of, a chance of serious consequences. Once you are out in front of the crowd performing, the dangers that arise from cheerleading seems like nothing. That is why safety rules should be and are taken seriously. With stunts like basket tosses and pyramids that are four girls high, it becomes easier for cheerleaders to suffer an injury. Taking the necessary safety measures it is what will contribute to the, to the high number of injuries beginning to decrease. Cheerleading is often looked at as not an athletic, but what many fail to realize is that cheerleading is one of the most dangerous sports out there. So 2468, who do you appreciate?
Cheerleaders, while well, they appreciate the rules that are in place so they get a se sense of safety. Then again, when you're throwing each other and yourself around like a sack of potatoes, you never know what you're going to get. I hope that you guys can better see and appreciate the things that cheerleaders do. Thanks.